The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's Word of Grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with His blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. Over the years, I've been privileged to spend time studying the Word of God, and it has blessed my life in ways that I can't even imagine. In doing so, one of the things that caught my attention and I thought was quite interesting was how it is that in the Bible, there is a distinction that is made between the minor prophets and the major prophets. I always thought that minor prophets were minor because they didn't have much to say. And the major prophets were those who God gave major revelations to that would bless us and that would encourage and strengthen us. But in my studies, I found out that there's actually minor prophets with some major messages. I believe that's how we can describe the prophet Haggai. Haggai, I believe, is a minor prophet, but he certainly had a major message. Listen to what the Word of God says in Haggai chapter number 2, beginning at verse number 6. The Bible says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land. I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace says the Lord of hosts. I really believe that this is a major message that is delivered by a minor prophet. I believe that what the prophet Haggai spoke, it really speaks to where we are today because we are literally in a season of God's grace and God's glory. The Bible clearly says it in Isaiah chapter number 60 that we are to arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. I really believe that we're in that season, that season where darkness is literally covering the earth, and deep darkness has covered the people of the earth. But it is such a blessing when we understand that in the midst of all of this darkness, the Bible clearly declares that the Lord has risen upon his people and that his glory is seen upon us. So I really believe that what Haggai prophesied is what we are literally experiencing today. For Haggai said, I will shake all nations. This is God speaking, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. Who is this desire of all nations? Well, when you study the Bible, you'll find out that the desire of all nations, it is interpreted as the beloved Jew. The beloved Jew is Jesus Christ himself. So what is all this shaking that Haggai is prophesying about? What, what is this shaking? What is the intent of the shaking that the prophet Haggai mentions in his prophecy? Well, I believe that this shaking is with a purpose. I believe that the shaking is designed to expose man's limitation while establishing that 
and establishing those who are totally dependent on the beloved Jew, who are totally dependent upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, what I'm saying to us today is that this shaking that Haggai prophesied, it comes forth with the intent of removing every man-made concept that is hindering the total and the complete trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Please hear me today. It is dark in the season that we're living in. And yes, there is a shaking that is taking place. But we all must understand the purpose behind this shaking. This shaking, it comes forth with the intent of removing every man-made concept, everything that is hindering total and complete trust in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Listen to what the Word of God says in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 25. The Bible says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying yet more, yet once more rather, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Please hear me today. The shaking that many are experiencing in the, in the time that we're living in, this shaking has come forward with the intent of removing every man-made concept that is hindering the total and the complete trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. What are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is this. What we're seeing manifesting in the world today, all of the wars, all of these diseases and pestilences, the pandemic, Everything that we see manifesting in the world today, we must understand that it is not about shaking, it is about removing. The shaking is going forth in order that the removal of those things that are being shaken can manifest. In other words, that which is not founded on Jesus, that which is not founded on the basis of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that which man has put his trust in, is being shaken in order that it might be removed. In other words, what God is trying to do in this season, I believe, is to get all of us to understand that regardless of how much money we have, regardless of, of how much education we have, Regardless of what type of connections we have, our dependence and our trust cannot be on our intelligence. It cannot be on our financial position. It cannot be even on the relationships that we have built in this world. Our foundation and our trust in this season, it must be in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let, let, let's look at it for a moment. Let's look at that phrase, yet once more. Because that phrase, yet once more, it suggests a couple of things that I believe we need to pay attention to. Listen to what it says, yet once more. He says it indicates the removal of things that are being shaken. We understand that this shaking it has come forth with the intent of removing. The shaking is not just about shaking, it is about removing. But when the Bible says, yet once more, it suggests to us that God has shaken the earth in this manner before. Listen to what he says. He says, yet once more. That indicates that this is not the first time that a shaking of this nature 
has taken place. Well, when was this first shaking done if in fact this is not the first time? Well, the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter number 19 that the first shaking that God is referring to, that the prophet Haggai is referring to, the first shaking, it took place in the book of Exodus when God himself established the old covenant at Mount Sinai. The Bible says it in Exodus chapter number 19 and verse number 18. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. That's the first shaking that the prophet Haggai is referring to. When God was establishing the old covenant, there was a great shaking that took place at Mount Sinai. But the Bible says, yet once more. So this yet once more, it suggests to us that yes, God did shake the earth like this once before. But it also suggests that there will be a second shaking. And this second shaking, it will ultimately be the last time that we'll experience this type of shaking within the earth realm. Because God clearly says, yet once more, I've done it before and I'm going to do it this way one more time. And guess what? This second shaking, it is not that which is taking place right now. Understand, many people are operating with the belief that God is shaking up things right now. But the truth of the matter is, when you read the Bible, you'll find out that this second shaking has also already taken place. It literally took place when Jesus was crucified and the new covenant was established in the earth realm. Remember, the first shaking took place in Exodus chapter 19 when God was establishing the old covenant. And God says, yet once more, I did it before, I'm doing it one more time. And this second shaking, it literally took place when Jesus died on Calvary's cross which established for us the new covenant of grace that we now enjoy as new covenant believers. The Bible says in Matthew's chapter 27, beginning at verse number 50, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, from the top to the bottom, and the earth quaked, there it is, and the rocks split. So the Bible clearly lets us know that the first shaking, it took place when God himself established the old covenant of law right there in the book of Exodus chapter number 19. But the second shaking, the final shaking took place when Jesus died on Calvary's cross, which established for us this wonderful new covenant of grace in which each and every one of us get to enjoy today in the times in which we're living. The logical question now is, if God himself, if he is not shaking the earth with all that we see, with everything that we're experiencing today, then what is going on with the earthquakes? What is going on with the pestilences? What is going on with the hurricanes and the wars and rumors of war? Well, I'll tell you exactly what's going on. All that we see today, it is not God shaking the earth again. What we see today is simply what I like to call the aftershock. It's the aftershock of the shaking that took place when Jesus himself died on the cross. And the closer we get to his return, the more intense those aftershocks will become. Listen, 
Don't get nervous. Don't operate in fear because these shakings are these aftershocks. They're designed to expose man's limitation. But while man's limitations are being exposed, they're also establishing that and establishing those who are totally dependent on Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. It's an awesome thing. While all of the aftershocks are taking place, while we're feeling the result of the shaking that took place when Jesus died on the cross, the awesome and the wonderful news is that while all the shaking goes forth, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor that is upon our lives, that grace makes us unshakable. So throughout the rest of this day, why don't you meditate on that and celebrate the fact that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has placed us on unshakable ground. Listen, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this has been your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homer worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, because of his awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by his tremendous love. Until next time, this has been your moment of grace. Thank you for sharing on today.